It involves collecting information from new sources. Primary data is usually gathered by asking questions or observing people's behavior. The main advantage of primary research is that it is original and the information gathered can be adapted to the needs of the business. However, conducting primary research is often time consuming and expensive. Some businesses employ a market research agency to carry out research. Agencies are experts in gathering, presenting, and analyzing information. However, they may be too expensive for many businesses. Some of the main methods of gathering primary data are discussed below. So, we have one method. We have two methods of primary research. We have the uh, we have two methods of research. We have the primary method and the secondary method. For primary method, it means primary research simply means we are gathering information first hand. That means this we call it first hand because this information is never in existence. There's no this information has never been in existence. No one has ever carried out this information. You are the first person gathering this information. That is why we call it first hand. Like are you how? with me? Making a research about something right now, mm. you're doing the research. Yeah. So it is first hand. You are the one in the field. Mm. So that is what we call primary research. Do you understand what primary research is there? Okay. You are collecting new information this. about a particular project, about a particular topic. There's this no is the one primary research. Before. What? There's no one researching before. The topic might be relevant, but what we are saying is that the information you are gathering, you are the one gathering the, the information on the field. That is primary research. Mm. Do you understand what primary research sure. is now? You are the one collecting the information sure. from maybe new sources. Mm. Is it clear? Right. So the, the main advantage of this is that it is original. And whatever information you gather, it's based on the needs of the business. Mm. You wouldn't just go out there to make research about what is not important. You're going to make research about what is important for the business. Yes or no? Yes. So that means you are gathering original reports that will be useful to the business. That's the advantage about it. But the problem about it is that it is time consuming and expensive. You know, it takes time before you can, you know, gather people, gather information. It costs money. Did you get it? Mm. But it allow but the the main advantage is that it allows the business to adapt, you know, to adapt to the needs of customers. Because you are making information, you are gathering to the needs of the customers or the objective of the business. Because you are gathering information based on a concept. And everything about it will be applicable because it's first hand. Is it clear? What about second? Secondary. That is information that is already, you know, that is already in existence. We're gonna get someone there. Else. Yeah. By another researcher. We're gonna get there. So let's go to types of market uh, primary research. The first one, questionnaire. Are you there? A questionnaire is a list of written questions. They are very common in market research and are used to record the views and opinions of respondents. A good questionnaire will have the following features. So, we call it questionnaire because it's a list that is written based on different questions. So, a list or a document that, that contains different questions for respondents. So, we have to fill the question. We have to fill the form. That's a questionnaire. Clear? Sure. So, what, what, what makes a good questionnaire? Number one, a balance of open and closed questions. So closed questions allow respondents a limit range of responses. An example would be, how many times have you flown with Emirates this year? The answer to closed questions are easier to analyze mathematically. Open questions let people say whatever they want. So a good questionnaire must have a balance, must strike a balance between open questions and closed questions. What are they? What? Like, what are they and what's the difference? For open questions, it allows you to, you know, to come up with your own opinion. You are not restricted. To certain answers, that is an open question. Mm. And for closed questions, you have limits. It mm. could be a yes or no thing. Oh, clear. Sure. All right. So a good questionnaire must have a must strike a balance between mm. open and closed questions. Two, contain clear and simple questions. Questions must be clear, avoiding use of jargon, poor grammar, and bad spelling. You must use words that are understandable, not uh, not terms that are not understandable to respondents. Do you get it? That's jargon. Is it clear? Yeah. The third one, not contain leading questions. Leading questions are these, those that suggest a certain answer. So your questionnaire must not already give the answer to the respondent. So you don't give leading questions. Leading questions that suggest what the answer should be. You shouldn't give it to, you shouldn't make your questionnaire like that. Do you get it? So a good questionnaire must not contain a leading question. That's the point there. Is it leading clear? Question. Is it clear, please? So basically, um, the question should not be that obvious. 
Yes, you must. It must not just give. It must not already give the answer. Mm. Do you get the point now? Yeah. Be short. Be short. If questions are too long, people will be reluctant to answer them or may stop part way through. So your questionnaire must not be so long that keep people, yeah. you know, the respondents, you know, get bored about. So it, should, it must be short so that they can answer and return. If it is too long. They wouldn't even, you know, they might answer some and leave the rest pathway. That's the, it should, the answer should be short. The questionnaire, the questions must not be too long. Maybe one to ten questions. Not one to 30, 40, 50 questions. Who has the time? Yeah. Nobody has time to, you know, to sit down and start answering questions for your business. Sure. Do you understand? Yeah. I think it's clear. Yeah. Questionnaires can be used in different situations. So we can use questionnaires via postal survey. So for posters of the questionnaires are sent out to people by letter and they are asked to complete them in their own time. They may be more convenient for, for people, but the majority of the questionnaires are never returned. This means that resources are wasted. So there are different ways in which you can use questionnaire. You can use it through poster survey. So for poster survey, these, has been, these, are sent, these questions are sent to different people from in different geographical locations. So the, it will go to the post services, the poster service. Then as soon as you receive it, you fill the form, you answer the questions, and you return. But most of the time, a lot of questionnaires are never returned. A lot of poster surveys or poster surveys, to, uh, questionnaires through poster surveys are never returned. I get it, I receive it, I never return it. I don't have to, I just drop it somewhere. That's the problem about it. And if that happens, resources are wasted because it, it never served the purpose. Two, telephone interviews. For telephone interviews, this means you are, you are reaching out, you are, you are, you are reaching through, you are, you are making a call through to someone. Yeah. To maybe interview. And what the advantage about making call through is that you get a feedback immediately. Mm. And it's a, it's, a means, it's a cheaper means of, inter, it's a means, cheaper means of gathering information. Do you get that? Yeah, sure. But some people do not like being phoned by businesses. So that's the problem about telephone conversation. You might put a call through and the person doesn't want to even receive your call. They don't like random calls. Do you get it? Mm -hmm. The third one, personal interviews. For personal interviews, this is, you know, one-on-one, -on -one. you meet people in the street, you ask them questions and they give answers. Is it clear? Sure. Is it clear, please? Yeah, sure, sure. The advantage is that as the respondents can, whatever the respondents don't understand, they can ask the interviewer. Do you get it? Mm. And the last one about questionnaire is online survey. Online survey has, has access to computers increase around the world. So does your use of online surveys. These are similar to poster survey, except the respondent may be directed to a questionnaire after receiving an email confirming an online transaction. So the difference between online survey and the poster survey is that for online survey, it might come at the end of a transaction. Mm. Sometimes you, you make a, or you use a WhatsApp call, you know, you make a WhatsApp call and after the call, after the conversation, yeah, it, uh, it's a, how do you see WhatsApp? Excellent, this, good, very good, poor, and the worst. That's a survey, that's an online survey. Yeah, sure. So most of the time, that's the difference between an online survey and the postal survey. For online survey, it might come immediately after a transaction. Mm. And you might, you will quickly get the feedback. Is it clear? Mm. Is it clear, please? Yeah. All right, done.